Okay, so if you're watching this, you're probably uh, you were probably wanting to travel in an RV, live in an RV, do the whole RV life, van life. She has a hiccup, so you'll probably hear that in the video, but uh so you some of y'all might be wondering so many noises going on or at least the nice weather during the winter time is southern florida and phoenix arizona so um okay no I'm gonna just try to start from the beginning because uh, it'd probably be easier. Uh, as a recap, uh, uh, my name is Matthew Foy. Me and my wife, Katie Ann, we went and traveled around the United States, or at least as much as we could, for about three months. So where we were planning on traveling for much longer, uh, potentially a year, uh, and we were wanting to travel around the whole United States. That ended up not happening, and that was for multiple reasons. You might be wondering why. At the end of 2020, I graduated from NC State. We Before that, we already bought the RV. We moved into it. We really enjoyed it. We loved the RV. There was some kind of problems that we did have with like the RV, like the slide out didn't go out very well. There was a few times it got stuck and we had to like reset it and manually override it. And then we were, I was very close. I thought it was stuck to the point that we couldn't fix it. And I was very close to actually um, taking it to a dealership and having them look at it. But they said the wait time was something like two or three months before they would even take a look at it. And since we were living in it, you couldn't do that. So that was some a problem that did arise that um, you should definitely keep in mind is even if you have a warranty, your warranty may not be that great because if you're living in your RV, it may be months before they could look at your RV. Uh, carrying on, we started in North Carolina. We went down to Southern Florida then we kind of cut all the way across to the California border. Our favorite areas, Katie Ann's favorite area was uh, Southern Florida because the weather was nice. My favorite area was uh, Phoenix, Arizona because the weather was nice. And then I think we both really liked Big Bend National Park because the weather was pretty nice and it was a really cool just area and views and you're out in the middle of nowhere. And there was lots of beautiful stars and animals and it was just really cool area to be in. One thing that I didn't realize, the m majority of the United States is actually very cold. Like it, and I kind of had in my mind, if you were in the Southern states of the, the United States, that most of the time you would have nice weather. But in reality, the only two places that has nice weather pretty much year round, or at least not freezing cold weather is, um, Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, Southern Florida. And our RV, most RVs are not insulated very well, so you have to run the RV almost all the time for it to stay nice and cool. Sleeping at night, it would be really hard with that. And the problem is, is you have to either run a generator that has uh, alternate current, um, or you have to be hooked up to a power. So it would make it really hard for boondocking or staying in uh staying in places like walmart or staying at harvest host uh so that's something else to keep in mind rv parks are way more expensive than you think they are uh, i think on average we were probably spending between 80 to 100 dollars a night and that was rv parks that we tried to save money that's just the going rate. like rv parks are very expensive and that's with you providing all of the stuff that kind of dropped our budget almost in half. Like we were thinking maybe we could make it almost a year traveling because we were like, oh, we'll stay in places where we don't have to hook up and we can do that. But 
you find out that you want the hook out a hook up that ends up just being so much nicer of an experience than trying to boondock gray water and your sewer and your uh, water they all r fill up and run out really fast boondocking is for us like i think we could only make it probably about three days max before we would have to go into a RV park so if i would if we were going to redo it we would probably try to stick to something like a class c uh, rv or a uh, van like a sprinter van uh, because with those you can stay you can essentially park in somewhat normal parking spaces at least with the van you definitely can park in like a normal parking space so you could go literally anywhere and not have to worry about where you're parking but that being said you have way less room and you have to be a lot more strategic with how you plan your meals and like how you take showers and where you go and and those vans are pretty expensive so uh you know that's i don't know like that's kind of a hard choice but yeah if we were not redo it i think we would definitely get a spinner van uh and then we would probably just take shorter trips and uh not try to do you know three month long trips uh that being said if you are part of this is because we traveled in so many places in such a short amount of time so if your goal is to just stay in one spot for i don't know like maybe you're going to stay in one city or area or rv park for a month or two months or three months then yeah you probably want to get a large i would just go ahead and get a fifth wheel or something like that if you can afford it and park it there and then drive around with your your truck uh that's probably what i would go about but traveling with rv it's very much a full-time job like you are especially if you're traveling as much as I, as we were i was doing a lot of planning i was driving i was the one that drove all the time we were driving long distances we didn't know exactly where we were going so i was usually like saying like okay well let's stay in phoenix arizona you know tonight so now i'm calling all these rv parks to see if they have availability that was kind of my own fault but at the same time i wanted to leave it pretty open so we could go wherever setting up the rv and tearing it down it's not it's not insane it's not like super hard but it is like if you're doing it every day or every other day i don't know i guess if we were gonna redo it I would probably try to stay at a place for at least a week, if not two to three weeks. Probably one of the main reasons why we stopped traveling uh, was two two folds, and it was two things. It was um, for me, it was very much the financial side of I hated that I wasn't working at all. I wasn't able to work remotely because I didn't find any remote jobs at the time. We weren't saving any money we were spending a lot of money uh and then uh katie ann on the other hand um she was i think she was having a hard time just again not having the community that we were used to we didn't have the friends and the family nearby we couldn't just go see them so those two things were kind of like taking a mental toll on us and just kind of I don't know we both came to the realization that we would both be happier if we were uh in one place at our own home and we could uh just focus on the community and our friends and family and uh, not have the stress of constantly trying to find a new place to stay we are extremely grateful extremely happy that we did travel because that was just something that just seemed really cool. It seemed like something I wanted to do. I really wanted to uh, make YouTube videos and all this different stuff. I had these big ideas in my mind that I was gonna, what I was gonna do. And, you know, sometimes it takes doing or trying those things to realize, oh, that's not really what I want. So it was eye-opening, it was a learning experience and it was just, it was a lot of fun. It, we still got to see really cool things and do something that most people don't get to do uh and you know i'm glad we figured it out for ourselves i had in my mind for the longest time 
all I thought about was I'm gonna work really hard I'm gonna save a lot of money so I can retire early so we could do something like this and I think that's a lot of people's goals or their goal is you know whenever I turn 60 or 70 or whatever I'm gonna retire and then we're gonna go live in an RV and we're gonna travel to the United States but personally I don't want that to be my long-term goal if we would have waited 20 years, retired, or 30 years, retired, and then did this this journey, I think I would have been sorely disappointed because I would have been, think it would have just not ended up being quite to the where I thought it might have been. I don't know, goals are good, but you never want to just live in the future and miss the present. One thing to note, uh, I'm sure some of y'all might ask this question, but we do not have the RV. We sold the RV very shortly after done. we were done traveling. We moved into an apartment. Uh, I ended up selling it as quickly as possible because I knew it would continue to depreciate. And at the time, RVs were a hot commodity. The future of this channel will not be travel vlogs. Uh, I will probably focus more of my attention on just whatever at the time I am interested in, like finances, uh, how I, we save money, uh, how much money I've made from being in the, the military, about investing money, and then probably some videos about my job as an engineer. Might even make some kind of like product review uh, videos. And then probably the videos that I could see myself making the most would be videos that are uh, making things and designing things because I think that's something that I probably enjoy the most and I think a lot of other people find enjoyment watching people or at least I find enjoyment watching other people make stuff on YouTube. Well, I appreciate you joining us on this, this adventure. Hope you all have a blessed uh, day and... You know, we'll talk soon.